when we choose not to obey God. Last Sunday, I was saying that one major thing that God wants to do is to bless, is to prosper, and to cause us to soar in life. As much as the conditions are there, as much as it is the will of God that we prosper, we multiply, we advance, we break limits, we will do that if only we will be willing to obey God in some aspects of life. And that is why tonight we'll be looking at first fruit, at one major f- principle to breaking limits. So I read the introduction. It said one major hindrance to breaking limitation in life is the disobedience in paying first fruits. And false fruits are in various types. We have, for example, and we said our God asks us to admit and give him all we are and have. And therefore, in this study, we want to know what false fruits are, how to give it, and the benefits of giving false fruit. When we do so, our life will never, never remain the same. But before we begin to look at what fourth fruits are, I want to acknowledge one thing, that the church of God has gotten a bad rap for the perception that it is always asking for money. People believe that when you come to church, all they want to ask from you is what? Is money. But that's not true. In this church, we have only taken offering and uh, tithe only once. I've been to churches that every 10, 15 minutes, they will ask you, give for this, give for that. The reason for this is because I believe if God does not have your heart, he doesn't have your pocket. If truly I say I love God, then it would be it shouldn't be a difficult thing for me to release what I have for mm-hmm. him. And that is my own principle. Some people even believe that the caricature of the clergy is always involved in making people feel guilty about giving. That each time we speak to us about giving is to bring this guilt conscience that, oh, They have come again because I'm not giving. They want me to be guilty. No. Please don't feel like that we are after your money. We are not. The first message, if you look at Malachi, Malachi chapter 1, is that God loves you. That God cares for you. That God wants to help you. If you feel a bit beat up and guilt reading, It is not the idea behind us looking at this message today. If you look at the parable, out of the 38 parables Jesus told, 16 of those parables were about money. In fact, the Bible has fewer than 300 verses, if you look at it, on prayer, and less than 500 verses on faith. But over 20 verses, 20,000 verses of scriptures is actually uh, speaking or dealing with wealth, with possession, and with whatever God has blessed us with. So what does this mean? It therefore means that our finances and uh, our general well-being is a big deal to God. He wants us to excel. And no matter how uncomfortable we need, uh, we see this idea of issue of money or false fruit, I want us to know that God wants you to give him even whatever you are giving him with a pure motive. Because if you don't give it to him with a pure motive, oftentimes you don't get what? The blessing 
and the, um, the, 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 the benefits of it. He wants us to give our best and not what? The remnant. Therefore, this uh, evening we'll be looking at first fruit. Now, Proverbs 11, chapter 9. It's not in your book, but if you find it, you can read for us. Proverbs 11, 9. And please, where's your Bible? Bible. You don't have a Bible. Ah, you came for Bible study and the Bible is at home? Thank God. If you have the Bible, please read for us. You must come to the church with your Bible. Yes. If you find it, please read for us. 11.9. Pro Proverbs. Proverbs. 11.9. I didn't say Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Through knowledge shall we the just be delivered. Let me tell you the truth. When we come to church, we are here to gain knowledge. And when we gain knowledge of certain things, if we follow through, we begin to see what? The benefits. But if we gain the knowledge and we do not follow through, we don't seem to gain anything. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Let me give you a, an example. If you are a student and you keep going for lectures, you keep going for lectures, you keep going for lectures, and you heard what was being said. Is that not true? But on the day of exam, when you are supposed to do what? Now tell the lecturer, this is what I understand. And you fail to do so. What happens at the end? That is the May we not fail at the crucial time of our life in Jesus' name. So, talking about first fruit, therefore, it is by knowledge that a jaws shall be delivered. The Bible says you are set free to the extent of the truth. Not only that you know, but that you embrace in the scriptures. First fruit, therefore, what is it? It is God's provision to help you to face every financial challenge of life. First fruit is God's provision to help you to face every financial challenges of life. If you look at the Bible, Leviticus 23, 9 to 14. If you find it, can you please read? Some of these things, that's why when you come, you, you know they are not in the... And you are not putting it down. Have I offended you today? I can see your eyes have changed. Hmm? Did I offend you? Okay, I'm sorry. Please put down some of those things I'm saying in your... Hmm? Praise the name of the Lord. Proverbs... Leviticus 23, 9 to 14. If you find it, please read. Because we want to try and explain what false fruit is. Because in that book of Leviticus, the children of Israel were the start of each harvest season. If you find it, please read for us. It shall be what? A statue forever throughout your generation. Now, what is false fruit? It's a statement of faith. False fruit is what? 
a statement of it, again, you won't find it in the handout you have. So if you want to jot it down, fine. Now, what does that mean? It means there is a lot more where this came from. There is a lot more from where this came from. So what we are telling God is that when we say first fruit, is a statement of faith that, look, God that has made it possible for me to pay this one, there is a lot more from what I have given. That's number one. Number two, it, it is called first fruit because it is it represented the first portion. It is what? The first portion of much to come. It, it, is, it represented the first portion. Now, one thing about God is that if it is not first, then it can never be first fruit. It must be what? First. And God is asking us for first, not only in our first fruit, even in our tithe. You know, some people, the way they pay tithe is that <clears throat> they will take out this, they will take out that, they will pay bills, they will do everything. Then they will now look at what is left and then say, God, this is for you. No. What I do is that even before I begin to pay those things, I bring out my check or if it is paying direct, make sure God's what, what belongs to God goes. That is first. So first, not only even in first food, in our offering, in our tithe, in our love for him, he must be what? He must be what? First. Now, it is called first food because it's a statement of total consecration of the harvest. In other words, if you have a harvest, and let's say this is the entire harvest, and because I love God, I now took one of these and took it out because it is what? It is the first fruit. You know what happened to the rest? It means the rest will be secured. There will be nothing that will affect the fruit that is left. But a situation where I choose not to, what happened is that something bad can do what? Can happen to this. There was a time, Papa gave an example here that ever since then, he has learned to give God what belongs to God. He said before, when he farms, because he used to be a farmer, he would just eat whatever he wants to eat. Whatever is left, he will sell and he will separate those ones he needed for what? To be planted. He said, but he began to notice that after so, um, so many seasons, what he left for him to eat suddenly will just go bad or something will happen to the entire harvest when he's planting in the new season. It is that there is little rain or there is what? No rain or too much rain. Now, why are we saying this? When we give the force to God, there is what? There is consecration. We do what? We consecrate the rest to God. Now, why is it called first fruit? It's a matter of where your trust is. When we say it's first fruit, it is a matter of what? Where your trust is. When we tell God it is first fruit, we're saying what? It is my trust. Is it in that particular thing? Or where? In God. In that thing or in God. I'm going to give you some examples so that you understand what we're saying. For example, in the Bible, God will always ask for what? The first. Who can give me examples of in the Bible before I give you a list of what I have? In the Bible of where God asks somebody for what belongs to them that is first. Yes, who is going to help? Abraham. God asks for who? Isaac. Isaac was what? The first. Again, who? Huh? Mm, well, maybe, yes. But he wasn't asking because there were two. One, Abel and Cain. Now, who else? Who else? How about Samuel? Samuel. Is that not true? 
the mother gave Samuel to who? Consecrated him to God. But was that the last that she had? No. The Bible says God gave him additional five boys and one girl. After who? Samuel. That is what we are saying that when you take the first and you give it to God, what happened? From that portion, God will do what? Give you more. Another example is the widow of Zarephath. What happened with the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings? Can somebody read 1 Kings 17, 12 to 15? 1 Kings 17 to 15. 1 Kings 17 to 15. 1 Kings 17 to 15. What did I what what did I tell you? Seventeen. Oh, twelve to fifteen. I'm so sorry. Twelve to fifteen. Huh? I know. Praise the name of the Lord. So, what was it that that woman did? She did what? She gave what she had. First. First. But the Bible says that she never went hungry. Is that not true? Because just like you read, the cruise of oil never what? It never, it didn't dry. How about the woman having the alabaster? Did you remember that story? I'm only giving us examples in the scriptures of people who gave the first. Mark 14 verse 3. Mark 14 verse 3. Look at what the Bible says there. The woman with the alabaster. Mark 14 verse 3. Look at what it says. It says, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having what? An alabaster box of ointment of spinkrad, very precious, and she did what? She break the box and poured it on whose head? On Jesus. That is the first. That is all she has. It's just like carrying your piggy bank for the little children, isn't it? Or what do you call, what other name do you call the piggy bank? Hmm? What other name? The loose change jars. Is that not? Some of us will have a loose change jars, isn't it? Or piggy bank where we put money. It's like this is all you have and you carried it and took it to who? To God. Another one, which is the last one, of course there are many more, is God himself. If you look at John 3.16, what does the Bible say about John 3.16? He said, for God so long the world that he did what he gave what did he give his only son begotten son he gave now i will give you some of this example so that you will be aware that when god is talking about force it has to be what force what will have happened in all these cases that we mentioned if those people did not give the first will they be able to reap the benefit no the story will have been what? A different thing. So, what then is first fruit? First fruit are in three categories. How many categories? Three. Number one is first fruit of increase. First fruit of what? Increase. When we say first fruit of increase, it means if I was earning $10 last year, and suddenly I got a raise 
of two dollars, making what? Twelve dollars. Is that not true? Now, the first fruit there is what? Who can tell us? The first fruit there is what? Eh? Is it two dollars? It's two dollars because it is what? Is what? Is the increase. Remember, I said there are three. The first one is what? First fruit of increase. So what was the increase there? Is it two dollars? You want to say something? Is it two dollars? Let's read our Bible. The Bible says Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Can we read it together? Proverbs 9. Yeah. Of your increase. Is that not true? Of your increase. Now, of your increase means that is what you had that was different from what you used to have. And then, what was the result in verse 10? What did he say in verse 10? Okay. Hallelujah. So, increase in salary. The difference between the old and what? The new paycheck. Now, the second one has to do with first fruit sacrifice. First fruit what? Sacrifice. In other words, this is the entire thing that came to you that particular month. For some of us, it may be that, look, you've been out of job. You now got a job in December or in June. Now, the first paycheck that you are giving is what is called what? The sacrifice of what? Sacrifice first fruit. That is what we call the first fruit sacrifice. And then, of course, if you read Genesis 22, it will tell you about how Abraham did what? Gave his son Isaac. Now, number three is what we call the redemption of the first male child. Exodus 13. Can somebody read verse 13? Exodus 13 verse 13. It says, and every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of what? Man among thy children shall thou what? Who can explain what that means? Who is going to explain to us what does that mean? Who is going to explain? What does it mean when we say you have to redeem your firstborn? You see, the life of a firstborn is very important. But God says you must redeem the life of that firstborn. How? Who is going to help us? Yes. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> we will get to know. So, how do we redeem the life of a... You will read it in the Bible. The first child belongs to who? God. The first child belongs to who? God. If you are the firstborn in that family, you belong to who? You belong to God. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that, oh, you must live your, like Samuel did. So be it, if that is what your parents want you to do, to come to the church. And when you look at it, even when Joseph, when he had children, what was it that Jacob told Joseph when he was about to die? He said, these ones that you see, they are what? They are mine because they are your first children. So who is going to explain what it means to redeem? Yes, I'm throwing it open. Can we read um, Numbers 18, 15 to 19? Numbers 18, 15 to 19, please. It says, everything that opens what? The matrix in all flesh, which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of men or of beasts, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man, did you see it again? The firstborn of man shall thou surely 
redeem. And the firstling of unclean beasts shall thou redeem. What does it mean when we say redeem? Redeem. Redeem. This is the redeemed Christian church of God. So when we say redeem, what does it mean to redeem? Restore. Mm -hmm. What else? Take back. Okay. Yes. Bought over. Bought over. Now you may not understand what the Bible is saying here. And I want you to please understand. What God is saying is that everything that opens the womb, he says they belong to who? To God. Now, for if you look at most firstborn, in most homes, they normally have a lot of problems. And I'm telling you the truth. Problem not because they want to, but because the devil is always attacking and he wants to have them. But the best thing you can ever do to God is to present that child to who? To God. Not like Abraham did and went and used what? Knife that he wanted to slaughter. No. But to tell God that look, this child belongs to who? Belongs to you. And if you read the Bible very well, there are several ways the Bible says you can redeem the life of the firstborn. Because if the firstborn does well, the probability that every other siblings coming after them will do what? They will do well. But if they don't behave and they don't do well, what happens? It is going to affect who? The other children. So when we talk about first fruit, and that's why it baffles me when people don't see how serious it is for them to ensure that their child gets to know God. I didn't say it. God said it. He said everything that opens the, the womb belongs to who? Belongs to me. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. I back. Hallelujah. Buy what? Back. With what? A suitable sacrifice. Now, for those of us who are not married, thank God you are not married now. Why? Because some of these things, we must learn to know them if you want your children to progress in life. So when we are talking about first fruit, it has to do with even those that open the womb. Now, when we talk about first fruit, sincerely speaking, especially when it comes to redeeming your firstborn, it is between you and who? And God. Even the one that we talk, whether it's of increase or sacrifice, it is between you and who? God. Whatever you think God is worth, do what? Give it to God. So, you must learn to buy what? Back. I've never seen a child, if you are first child, that your parent did this, that you will not do well in life. Because it is the principle of the Almighty God. I remember in those days when our children were, even just to take an exam, exam that you think, well, they should just pass. No, we don't take it. We go to God, even before they take the exam, we say, God, this is for you. For what? for what this boy or for what this girl is about to do. In other words, I'm thanking God in what? In advance. Many of us will have learned to thank God when he has what? He has done it. Yes, please. That is what I'm saying. It is between you and God, if you look at first fruit, it is something that comes every what? 
harvest. Is that not true? When you harvest something, huh? every season that you harvest something, you can. But just like I said, it's not somebody who will come and tell you that, look, redeem your firstborn with one dollar. No, it's between you and who? And God, look at that woman with the alabaster oil. Did he? He didn't ask anybody. It was between him and God, she, uh, her and God, and she just grabbed the thing and took it to who? To the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, because of time, I won't want to dwell too much on that. Now, let's go on the benefits because of time. What does it mean when we choose to obey God? What are the things that will come that will be the benefit? Number one, we said dedicating false food to God is a way of thanking him for providing them. Genesis 24. Can somebody read that? And Abraham was old and when stricken in age and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. The Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he is become great. And he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he all that he had. What can explain to us what that servant is trying to tell us? That because of what Abraham did, look at what the Bible says. He said, God has blessed my master with what? Look at all the things that servant mentioned, which wouldn't have been the portion of Abraham if he didn't do what? He didn't give the first. And I told you at the beginning, it must be the first or it is not. So the first thing that will come is that you will be a living proof of God's mercy to your generation. In other words, God will open the windows of heaven for you. You see, where others are finding it difficult to break forth and to break through, you will suddenly find that things that look so difficult for other people is what? It's easy for you. It's easy. That's number one. Number two, you will be celebrated and what? Always be congratulated. You see, men will call you blessed when they see God blessing where? On your life. Number three, you will have adequate harvest. Remember, we said that one major thing that first food does is that it protects what? Whatever is left. Once you have a first food, it will protect the balance. So the thing you must note here is that you will have what? Adequate harvest for your labor. First Samuel 2.21. Who is reading that for us? He says, and the Lord visited who? Anna, so that she conceived and bare how many sons? After she has given how many? She gave how many to God? One that was what? The first. What if she said, ah, who is going to do that? This is the only child that I have. And no way. He's not going to that way. To that, is it tabernacle? What do they call it? Synagogue. They call it synagogue in those days, isn't it? No, my own child is not going to be one of the priest's children. And she kept Samuel to herself. What do you think will have happened? 
let me tell you the truth. This verse will not be written in the scriptures. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But because she gave the first, God now said he visited a woman that was said to be what? Barren. In other words, they, nobody thought anything good would come out of that woman's life. And the Bible says God now gave her what? Three sons and two daughters. Three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before who? The Lord. Why? Because the mother gave her, gave him to who? To God. Now, when God was now looking for who? A prophet. He knew where to look for. Oh, one would have said, well, since Eli was the prophet, therefore his children would have been come what? But you knew what happened to those children. What happened to those children? Eli's children. What happened to them? They died. They died. And Samuel, that nobody ever thought would become what? A priest and a prophet. Suddenly became what? Because of what God, because of what the mother and the father did. Let me tell you, if you want progress for our children, sincerely speaking, learn to dedicate them to the Lord. To God, they belong to who? Because in the first instance, if he has not given them to you, you won't even have them anyway. Is that not true? You won't even have them. Number, what are we now? Number four, he said, all your enemies will do what? They will bow down to who? Your God. In other words, you will subdue and you will dominate. Anytime you give the first fruit, there is no devil anywhere who will be able to do what? I'm telling you. Not even your child, even you. Because one thing first fruit does is that it gives you maximum protection. In fact, in a, a place it says it gives you comprehensive what? Insurance. Where some people, there are times I drive and when I'm coming back, I mean, that was normally every morning I walk. So, I had gone the first round, I had gone the second round, and I was going the third round. And suddenly, I saw, what do you call it? The ambulance and everything. And I said, but I just passed this place now. You can't believe how terrible the accident was. Why am I saying this? Because when you give God the first, you now become his own um, you become his, uh, what word, what grammar will I use? Not only his favorite, you become his concern. You become what? His concern. In other words, nothing. That's where it comes when he says, touch not my what? Do my prophet. It is when you have given the first fruit. Can you imagine Abraham facing <laughs> How many, nation, how many kings? Read it in the Bible. With just 400 of his own what? Servants. What a king of... Um, where was Lot? What is the name of Lot? Sodom and Gomorrah. Could not do. Abraham armed himself with just 400 of his own what? Servants. These are not professional. In fact, when I read it at times, it bothers me. These are not professional what <laughs> soldiers. But yet, they went, confronted professional soldiers and did what? They defeated them and took back everything, including Lot himself. Because Lot has already lost his Lot. He took them back. And as he was coming, the king of Sodom said, uh, you know what? Uh, keep the goods, but give me what? The people. He said, no. I'm not going to keep the people. I'm not going to them. He said, unless you come and turn around and said, I am the one who made what? Abraham rich. He gave everything back. What else do we say? You will confidently testify. Did we read that Genesis 128? Yes, please read it. So, 
subdue, you have dominion. Subdue, you have dominion. Okay, number five, you will confidently testify to who? The goodness of God anywhere you go. Number six, God will make you a voice. A voice to who? To the world. A solution provider. Voice to the voiceless. Exodus 2, 11 and 14. It's not there, but you can read it. Exodus 2, 11 and 14. If you find it, please read. Okay. He said, and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their bodies and he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. Look at verse 14. And he said, who made thee what? A prince and a judge over us. Intends thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Why are we reading about Moses? Moses became what? A voice for who? The voiceless. Was it Moses alone that was in the house of uh, his parents? No. But because he was dedicated to God, God now used him to become what? A voice. May you be a voice to your generation in Jesus' name. Number seven. Oh, is that number seven? Yeah. You will enjoy what? Comfort. You will enjoy favor. You will enjoy ease round about you. Why? Because of what? First fruit. What is making some people to cry and weep will be far away from you. And that is one thing I have noticed. Why some people will be crying and gnashing their teeth? You will be what? You will be happy and be rejoicing. Why? Because of what? What you have done. Because whether we like it or not, God, he looks at some of these things. The Bible says God looks at what? The heart. Is it not? Okay. Suddenly, somebody woke up one day, and that was Solomon. He said, look, what, how can I make God happy? You know what he did? What did he do? Who can tell us what he did? Sir? A thousand. In those days, it has never happened that somebody would just carry a thousand. It's just like uh, in 1948, in this even America, and you carry one thousand dollars. It, uh, you know, a thousand dollars in those days was for, <laughs> for you to carry it and say you are giving it to God. People say people say you are mad. Is that not true? But oftentimes there is nothing you do for God that you will ever miss or lose the reward. When we started, I told you that the only thing that will not make us to flow in abundance and in breakthrough and to break limit is when we disobey who? God. Number eight, he says what? Can somebody, okay, like Solomon, God will visit you and bless you with what money cannot buy. What was it that God gave Solomon that money cannot buy? Who can remind us? Wisdom. Wisdom. And not only wisdom, God will grant you help from above. While some other people are thinking, what do I do? What will I do? God will do what? He comes in and helps you. Number nine, you will do what? Go fast and you will go far. You will go what? Fast and you will go. You know that God will grant you speed in life. Why some people are saying, look, you can't. Why is it that? Look at the children of Israel. When they were about to leave Egypt, what was it that God told them? God told them to do something. To make what? A sacrifice. Do you remember? Even when the king came and said, okay, when um, Moses came, he said, uh, you can't go. Go only with your cattle. After some time, he said, okay, go with this one, but don't go what? Don't go very far. But a man or a woman who gives first fruit will go not only far, they will go very fast. Why? Because God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Let me tell you, first fruit is a matter of faith. It's something you do trusting God that, look, God is able to do what? 
bless me more than. Remember the way I define it that you are telling God, God, from where I took this, more is coming from there. Praise the name of the Lord. Number 10, you will stand you and you will find what? Favor. Luke 2.52. Luke 2.52. What do we have there? God was what? Pleased. You see, when you become the first fruit or you give the first fruit, God will be what? He will be pleased with you. The Bible tells us, it says, for with many of them, God was not what? Pleased. First Corinthians. He said, many of them, God overthrew them in the wilderness. But when you give first fruit, God will be what? He will be pleased. Let me tell you, it's not an easy thing. It is not what? An easy thing. But if you obey God, the blessing far outwits what? The blessing outwits what? The pain. But if you don't do it, what will have come, what should have come to you naturally will not come. What God could have bothered and troubled some people and said, with sleeplessness that they won't be able to sleep. God will not do it. Who can give us an example of what happened to them when they gave first fruit? I want to listen now. Yes. Have you given first fruit before? No. <laughs> yes. Who can give us just what happened to you when you did and when you didn't? So, none of us have given false fruit here. Yes. Go ahead, sir. The classical one that came to my mind is uh, my daily wife. Sometimes last year, we went to London at the first, maybe February. And, and uh, before we went to London, she said, Ah, I must pay my first fruit. Must pay my fruit. And she went to drop her first fruit. By the time we got to London, a one of our cousins said, ah, I want, to, I, I want to give you a business now. And she was already in London, and she sent the quote. They gave her the business, and they pay her. Paid her. And she was ah, thank God she paid her first fruit. And I also want to also thank God. I remember those days I was doing banking. And, you know, I just said to myself, first month, I'll pay my first fruit. And usually we reduce our expenses in, in uh, December. We just said, because we're making provision for to pay first fruit, uh, it will be from October, November, December, we start reducing our, our expenses. And I also realized that some people we started banking together, so many of them dropped just for little problems. And we were able to scale and go to the top. Praise the Lord. My sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I know I'm not very faithful with my first fruit, but my daughter, ever since she started work, it's just something that um, she embarked upon. And one particular year after she finished with her master's, she went for a job search somewhere. And they, she met some people. She was passing by, and then they just said, oh, can we see your resume? And she just handed it over to them. And she said, oh, I don't have time. I'm having an interview with another uh, company. And we're like, oh, this won't take long, just five minutes of your time. And she just grudgingly, grudgingly attended that. And to God be the glory on that spot. They gave her a six-figure salary and, and made her, that was her first job after she had her master's, and made her director too. And, and I said to her, and she was, I said, you know, this is a result of your first fruit and your tithes that you pay. And not only that, even when she got that first pay, she was still able to pay her first fruit as much as that money was. So, and... I just felt like, for me, 
I always pray that God will give me that grace too, so I can be faithful with my first fruit. Praise the Lord. Any other person? You see, it's a principle that has worked for several people. I told you, you can be in the church, and all you can see is situation will just be, you may be going round and round and round. But all God is asking you is obey me and do it. And doors you never imagine in your life suddenly will open. Yes, sir. It's about redemption of uh, firstborn. Remember that the Jews sometimes you go in early 2000, uh, taught on first food. So myself and my daddy, I would just agree that we must uh, redeem our firstborn. So we started saving towards it. So one day, in our province and our uh, region, in, in Lagos, that Jew was coming for first for, for the redemption of firstborn. So we our savings towards it, we took it. And to the glory of God, you know, his education had been so smooth and everything concerning him had been so smooth. And uh, and I just thank God that he's graduating now. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, why are we saying some of these things? It's not because we want to say it, but it's a principle. You want to say something? Oh. No? <laughs> Tight is different. Tight is a tenth of what God has given to you. Ten percent of everything. And let me tell you, it's not just money. Even this false fruit we are talking about, it's not just money. I pay false fruit on if you give me, if I have six shirts now, somebody, I will always look for somebody to do what? I will. If it is true, I will be looking for. It's not, it's not limited. Somebody was raising up his hand. You. World of like darkness and evil that comes around. Um, I was just asking how me as a person of God and like how, how, how can I shine? Everybody is tempted. There is nobody on earth, on this surface earth, that is not tempted. Do you understand? Temptation will come. But the issue is <laughs> if you fall into it, that is where the problem is. And the Bible says that in the day of what? If you fall into adversity, he said your strength is what? You see, that is the reason why we have studies like this, house fellowship, come to church, so that you can equip yourself, you can build capacity over these things. Jesus even was tempted. Is that not true? Yeah, he, he was led, but he never fell into it. So if it is possible for Jesus not to fall, then you won't fall if you can build capacity the way. If you will fast, even though he's the son of God, he will pray. Is that not true? Yeah. Uh -huh. So that is what we're saying. And you will read your Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, before we pray, because I want us to go, is one thing, one benefit that I have noticed about um, first fruit is that you will receive a double portion and everlasting joy when you pay your first fruit. Isaiah 61 verse 7. You won't find it there. Isaiah 61 verse 7. As I was praying, I began to jot those things down. Can somebody read that? Isaiah's double Isaiah 61, 7. Did you see that? Instead of what? Shame. You will have what? Double. And First of fruit. Humiliation, you shall rejoice over their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess a double portion. Double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Hallelujah. My prayer is that if only we will just obey. The other day I was reading the Bible, said my people will not just listen. My people will not just obey me. He said, I wish they have obeyed. And God said, these are the things that will have come as a result of what? Obedience. But when we don't obey, God too will do what? Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah 59. He said, it's not as if the hand of the Lord is what? It's short. How can the hand of God be short? 
His hand is not short. He said, but there is something that he's looking for. Because at times I ask myself, God, what did you see in this brother that you decided to bless him? What did you see in this sister that you chose to do what? To bless him. There must be something God is always looking for. And when we talk about false fruit, is what God is looking for. People who have made their life that kind of sacrifice, I'm telling you, they've always gotten double. Double. Whereas people who didn't do it, they remain where they are. They would just be saying, when people ask them, say, how is life? They say, we are managing. They've been managing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, ten, some even 50 years. I have a friend. He just recently celebrated his 68th and he was telling me he doesn't have anything. Can I send money so that he can go and buy Keke Marua? I say, at what age? You know uh, Marua's, uh, this, thing, this tricycle. I said, at what age? At 60? That's when you want to begin to... No. 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 There are principles that it's not about you. It's about God. That when you do what he asks you to do, you know what he does? On your behalf, he goes behind you to force people just to want to bless you, to want to help you. Doors that have been shut over some people. When you walk there, you just see, bam. Uh -uh. And as soon as you pass, what happens again? The door closes. Many of us who came to this country and we did it when we were supposed to do it, today we are enjoying Is that not true? Ask people who wants to come in. Even if you want to come and have babies now, I understand they will prosecute. <laughs> in those days, some people had it for free of what? <laughs> Charge and they left. But now, they said they will be asking questions. And in fact, they said they, you have to bring pregnancy tests before they give you visa now. In fact, they are mounting everything. And don't tell me you just go and look for one quack doctor and say, go and give them this. No, they have their own doctor that they will tell you, go there. And they know those ones will not give them anything wrong. They bring the thing, they will seal it and give it to you. If it is broken, they will, you, are, you will be prosecuted even for that, <laughs> for breaking the seal. One other thing that I noticed for people who do what? They enjoy honor and overflow. Blessing from the almighty God. They enjoy what? Honor and overflowing blessing from who? God. And number three, or another one that I already said, it imposes a blessing on your home. When you give false fruit, God imposes what? A blessing. Can we read Ezekiel? 44.30. Ezekiel 44.30. Then we'll go and pray. Ezekiel 44.30. Ezekiel 44.30. What does it say? Priests. In your house, there will be a blessing. Where? In your home. When you give what? The first fruit. The first fruit. Does anybody want to contribute to this? Because this is where I'm going to stop. That's true. While some other people, I told you, my first coming to this country, we were the military governor of Lagos State then was going to send some people to the U.S., even though I was already in the service. But there were quite a number of my colleagues. I have never even traveled out. I'm talking about 1996. I have not traveled out of and about say about 12 or 11 of us. Some studied in Bombay. Some in Russia. Some in Italy. 
Anywhere you can imagine. All their passports were what? They had stamped them. But by the time we got to the American embassy, all of them were what? They were all rejected. In fact, it got to the point they said, look, let's go. Don't even, for us, if they rejected us, you, that you don't even, but that is human what? Wisdom. I said, no, no. We didn't come here together. So we are not getting that. You went there, I'm going there too. Let them say whatever they have to say. And of course, immediately I got up to go there. The guy who has been denying and denying and denying them just got a call from their supervisor and said, look, come and attend to this. So it was one rookie um, guy who they just sent to the American embassy. They said, you, go and attend to him. And the guy, of course, was just asking me, one, two, three, hey, why are you going? Why is Lagos State so dirty with all this? And I told him, well, I am to teach them to be clean, but I'm not an enforcement agent. I said, in your country, don't you have an enforcement? And of course, you know, there are enforcement uh, agents that goes about to make sure that even the trees that are, they will come, they will write somewhere, look, you need to plant another tree. <laughs> and the guy said, oh, that's true, that's true. Okay, wait, we'll give you multiple choice. In those, I mean, multiple visa. In those days, it's two years. By the time I got to our center, because we are a training facility, they were all expecting me to say I was equally what? Denied. And I showed it to them. I said, no, me, I wasn't denied. I was given. Why am I saying this? The Bible says, the gift of a man, whether it's false fruit, whether it's tight, whether it's quality offering, let me tell you, God does not look aside. And I've always told you, when you give to God, never in your life think you are giving to man. Because it's not man that receives it from you. It is who? It is God. And it is God that is going to do what? Bless you. Now, Isaiah 1, because I want to close now. 19 to 20. Can somebody read for us? Let me tell you, obedience works wonders. Can somebody say obedience works wonders? Obedience does what? Works wonders. Can somebody read it? Or we should read it together. He said, if you be what? And you shall do what? And I want you to note that very well. If you are willing and you are obedient, what will happen? You will eat the good of this land. Look at the other verse. He said, but if you refuse and you do what? He said, this guy is just uh, bamboozling us. If me too, if I don't pay my first fruit, I won't get the benefit. Let me tell you the truth. If I don't pay my tithe, I won't get the benefit. If I don't give quality of I won't. It's a principle that works with anybody. So if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be what? Devoured with it. You will not be devoured with the sword. He said, for the mouth of the Lord had what? Spoken it. Obedience works wonders. My prayer is that we will be obedient to God. And we will reap the benefits in Jesus' name. Of course, that is not all. But I know that when you give your first fruit, you will break financial limitations. If you give your first fruit, sick will never. People find themselves today, I'm owing this. Tomorrow, I'm owing. False fruit does what? Liberates you from those things. Not that you won't have money to spend, but the issue is that you have much more in your pocket. Things will just be tight. Things will just be tight. And not because you are not working. I know people who work one, two, three jobs, but when you ask them, my brother, what would they tell you? Ah, mm -mm, things are tough. No, things must not be tough with you. The only reason is what? I am disobedient. Because what God could have given to you on a platter of gold, what did you do? You threw it away. And let me tell you, anytime you have the opportunity to give, see it as an opportunity to change level. To change level. To change level. If you give to God, know that there is what? An opportunity for you to do what? Change level to the next but oftentimes, what, what, the way we look at it is that ah, when they say bring it, you even give it grudgingly. And the Bible says, 
if you give grudgingly, what happened? <laughs> it will not be accepted. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Any other contribution? We will need to pray. I'm done. Contribution or you have anything to add, please. The floor is yours if you are there. Nobody wants to say anything. Do we understand all that we have said about the first fruit? Yes, sir. Yes. That's true. Breaking what? Limitation. The best way to break limitation is to do what? Give a false fruit. And when you do so, you can never be limited. And I'm telling you the truth. Many a times when I've given false fruit, the thing is still in my mind. I have not put it down. You know what happened? God has already begun to raburazzle people all over the place. Just bless him. Just give him something. There is hardly a day that people don't give me something. Hardly. Not because I'm a pastor. No. But because of what I do. And there is no day too I don't give. No day. No day. I will look for something I think I will want to bless somebody with. And the Bible says give and what? It is a principle. And the Bible says it's good measure. What again? Press down. Doing what again? Shaking together. Shall who? He didn't say shall God. You know why he didn't say shall God? Because God will go behind the scene and put pressure on the man that the fellow will not have, he will have sleepless nights until he has done what? He has blessed you with it. That is the way the principle works. And oftentimes when you are looking from this direction, no, God is coming from this direction. That's why many of us, when we say we have uncle, we have them, we have done this. It's the day you went to that uncle that will say, ah, if you had come yesterday. <laughs> and I just gave out two million just yesterday. You want to say something? Okay. Praise the Lord. Shall we be upstanding as we pray? I want us to talk to God.